Sunday morning service, uh, odd as it may seem. Uh, before we get started, I want to introduce you to those who haven't already met her to Vi Link. You'll see her on uh, Zoom here. Vi is a student at um, uh, Yale Divinity School and it's going to be joining us to help with technology, but I also hope that as things go along, she will have a chance to be uh, meeting with you guys one way or another and getting to know you and getting to know the, the cluster. She's very interested in the cluster. Would you like to say anything, Mike? Uh, just that I'm really excited to be here and uh, get to know this community, albeit in an unusual way. Um, but it's a, it's a lovely way to start the school year to have this opportunity to um, join y'all in this journey. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so we begin and uh, we'll ask Gray Bishop to do uh, a prelude. land let my people go oppressed so hard they could not stand let my people go <coughs> go down Moses way down in Egypt's land What to do, let my people go to lead the children of Israel through, let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. His command, let my people go, and came at length to Canaan's land, let my people go, go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. us all from bondage free, let my people go, and let us all in Christ be free, let my people go, go down Moses, way down in Egypt's land, Lovely, lovely. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy, mercy upon us. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be God. The psalm for today is Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, 
but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my light and let me sing. Always only for my King. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord God. Jesus began to show his disciples <clears throat> that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, forbid it Lord, this must never happen to you. And he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them? if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste of death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Christ. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. What a contrast to last Sunday's gospel's reading. Last Sunday, Shimon, Simon, confessed that Jesus is the Messiah, and Jesus gives him a new name, Kephas, Petros, a rock. And on that rock, the church will be built. Now, this week, when he hears that Jesus the Messiah must suffer and will be killed, he rebukes Jesus because that doesn't square with his idea of the Messiah. In return, he gets a stinging rebuke. Get behind me, Satan. That personification of evil and chaos had already confronted Jesus in the temptations. 
letting him to consider easy options for being the Messiah. And Jesus refused the easy options that were offered. Now, Simon Peter doesn't like what he hears, and in doing so is likened to Satan. The problem for us all is that the gospel has a lovely message. Grace and peace to all, love God, love your neighbor, and live happily hereafter. Except that last piece is one that we tag on and add to. God has never promised happily ever after. He's only promised his love which will carry over into the hereafter. In our first reading, Jeremiah confronts God over what he, Jeremiah, is experiencing. He proclaims God's message as a faithful servant and is hated for it. In fact, he was attacked for his unwelcomed words and shut up in prison. Why, says Jeremiah, I suffer for you, God. I don't sit in the company of merrymakers. How come doing your calling makes me unpopular? It isn't fair. God's answer is somewhat ambiguous, other than that he will eventually be vindicated. The lesson is that sometimes in our lives, we too may be called upon to take up a cross and suffer for standing up for God's gracious love. And what is more, our conscience may be tested to a breaking point. It may, be, may end up with us being conflicted and put us in a place that we never dreamt of. Last week, Jim mentioned the German theologian and pastor, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer was hanged by the Nazis just before the war ended. He was on Hitler's list of those who were not to survive the final days of the tumbling Third Reich. Why? Why decide that a theologian and pastor shouldn't survive? It's because of this. Bonhoeffer had wrestled with God's demand to love your neighbor as yourself. And eventually this posed for him a dilemma. Think for a moment of the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan finds the beaten up body of a Jew, binds up his wounds, places him on his beast, takes him to an inn, pays for his recovery. Love of neighbor, certainly beyond a minimum, extravagant. But supposing the Samaritan arrived just when the robbers were mugging the man. What should he have done? Hide? Or would his duty to this neighbor who was being attacked mean that he had to stop, intervene, overpower, possibly be killed or kill the perpetrators of the attack? This is the cost of conscience. And for Bonhoeffer, who was well connected in German society, his love for most neighbors in the world led him to join a plot to kill Hitler. Now, no one, as far as I know, has certainly in the US and Europe has lamented the death of bin Laden or Abu Bag al Baghdadi. Their deaths were seen as safeguards, safeguarding other lives. And of course, they were carried out by military people. Bonhoeffer was not military, he was a pastor. But his love for the many meant surrendering, giving up love for Hitler. 
Now, had he and his group been successful, in hindsight, Europe and the rest of the world would have regarded him, I'm sure, as a hero. I suspect that for Bonhoeffer himself, had he succeeded, he would have seen it as a cross he'd had to bear, to kill when he would rather not, but that, that was his duty for the love of all those other neighbours. Sometimes carrying a cross will make us unpopular. Sometimes it may conflict our conscience. It may lead to our unpopularity and could even lead to our demise. I pray God that none of us will have to face the difficult dilemma that Bonhoeffer had to face. I certainly don't know what my response would have been. However, when we feel despondent because our Christian commitment doesn't seem to be appreciated, we may take some comfort that the Messiah suffered to secure not the happy hereafter, but life of the world to come. One New Testament commentator says this, the cross of Jesus Christ bears ultimate witness to who God is, not the God of the Jewish leaders demanding sacrifice, nor the God of Caesar demanding law and order. The Romans saw the cross as a public ritual that restored law and order. The religious leaders trusted that the cross would remove a threat to religion. But the cross turns out to be the perfect expression of God's own power to save and to redeem. It was necessary for Jesus to suffer and die at human hands in order to demonstrate the depth of God's forgiveness, mercy and love. So when our lives get tough and difficult, when our cross seems to be a heavy burden, let us rejoice that that is the very time that God is surrounding us with forgiveness, mercy and love. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Another commentator said, love isn't always a hug and a kiss. Sometimes it's a cross. Amen. I begin this morning where, with a prayer of commitment by Hila and posted on the Love God, Love Neighbor website. Today, Lord, I once again take up my cross and follow you. Forgive me for choosing daily to be complacent. Happiness has been my God and I believe I am entitled to it. Forgive me for all the excuses I have not responding to you immediately with urgency and sacrificially. Forgive me for complaining about being bored as I sit and do nothing. Forgive me for the times I have tried to make carrying my cross more comfortable. I have been too concerned with finding things to make it easier, gadgets and toys to make my cross lighter, smaller and cushioned. Forgive me for making excuses and not going with you because I was worried about my health, safety, reputation, loneliness, financial security, and the ability to handle extreme weather and getting dirty. Forgive me for focusing on my comfort rather than my character. Forgive me for the times I have not followed you because it wasn't convenient. I didn't want to go out of my way to see the needs around me because then I would feel guilty for not doing something about them. Forgive me for not loving my neighbors. I don't even know their names. Forgive me for being so busy with my priorities that I forget to meet with you 
and then squeezing a few verses in at the end of my day so I can check devos off my to-do list. Forgive me for trying to pacify my conscience with giving just enough feel good about myself, but not enough to inconvenience my lifestyle. Today, Lord, I once again take up my cross and follow you. Shake me off of my complacency. I want to live daily with an urgency to radically be the change you call me to be. Strip me of my comforts. May my love for you be a driving force to live with joyful surrender. Scratch out my schedule. I don't want my circumstances or timeline to influence my dedication and obedience to take up my cross and follow you. Here I am. Send me. May your word pour out of me like water to the thirsty, and may my life be full of the fruit of the Spirit. All I am and have, I give back to you with open hands, knowing that all my needs you will meet as I go with you. Today, I take up my cross and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you this morning to turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and affirm our beliefs together in the words of the Nicene Creed. Okay, I am on that now. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate in the Mary and was made man. For her sake, he was pursued under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was serving. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in the day of glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found on page 392. In, pre in peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our family, and friends, and friends, and friends, and friends. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work. who work for justice, freedom, and, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who administer to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel and for all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve the God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we give thanks and prayers for Vi, who is joining us to, today uh, and continuing with us through our Zoom services, 
and maybe even beyond that, who knows what God has in store for us. We also ask prayers for Suzanne Lafon Pulse, who, who is joining us, and we may not see her on Zoom. Catherine, our first selectman from Killingworth, who joins in. Sherry, Cheryl Miller. And uh, I also like to say a good morning and a welcome and prayers to Ray Schumelis. Uh, we miss Alex and Oliver, his sons, very much. I'd like to um, say some prayers for a dear friend of ours, Susie Burks, who um, had fallen in her home and has several um, broken ribs, fractured face. <coughs> And um, she's in the trauma unit. And they will be moving her down to uh, a regular room. But with COVID conditions, she will not be able to have visitors for eight days. So she will be alone. Um, and our friend Laura, who is her dear friend and caretaker and was her caretaker, um, is very um, upset by this. So we need to really keep this couple of people in our prayers. Also, uh, some of you may remember um, Trish Dina, who was from the Church of Epiphany, part of our cluster in the Durham community. Her daughter's house um, was hit by lightning. So please keep that family in our prayers. Uh, we also give thanks to the, the doctors who have uh, worked on Jim for his eye surgery and we continue prayers. Uh, I understand that he's going to be having the other eye done, so our prayers continue for him. I also like to send prayers out to my sister who is uh, dealing with some health, health issues and um, my friend uh, Kathy and Mike who are still working through their health issues. I would like to ask prayers of great thanksgiving and joy because next Saturday, September 5th, uh, will be Vern and my 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, she was seven and I was nine. Uh, but, uh, we've been together a long time. And uh, I just want to give thanks for her and for the life we share. Wow. Prayers go out to you and your family, your whole family, your beautiful family. We also give thanks for our children and for our pets and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. For our cluster churches uh, and the Macam Network, St. Andrews, St. James, and Emmanuel. And a shout out hello to Robin Biltz Wood, who joins us almost every week from California. Um, welcome and hi. And as always, we give thanks for all that we are and all that we can be through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Yes, great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And the strangers that we may meet during our course of this week. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your name, name forever, forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put, put their, their trust, trust in, you. in you. A prayer of petition by Terry, posted on Reverend Gaub Blog Powell. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Help us to see your presence burning in the hearts of others. Grant that we may be united in a fellowship of love and prayer. Give us courage to pick up our cross and respond to the needs of the world. Give us the stamina to follow you, to be your hand and heart in the world. Enable us to witness to your grace and mercy. We pray all this through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Having heard so much about taking up our cross, I thought it would be appropriate to spend 
few moments in silence uh, as a part of a confession, a confession from your heart to God's heart of the ways you have not taken up your cross, of the ways you have fallen short, of the ways you have not done what you've been given to do. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. and the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I wish you all peace, joy, and love. I uh, wish we could be together, uh, and someday we will be. So, thank you so much. If you have bread and wine available, uh, you may have it now. And uh, we'll trust the Holy Spirit to see if um, God can work online. Almighty God, creator of the universe, we give you grateful thanks and praise for this grain of the earth and fruit of the vine. May it be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into, into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper had ended, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father 
in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal King. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold as thine. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep, let's keep the feast. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in everlasting life. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you all. Thank you. Great job. Thanks, everyone. Ray, your music is great as always. I love it. And that was pretty a pretty low note you hit there this morning, the first thing. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> that was very nice. That was really nice. Yeah, it was very good, Ray. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great, good week, good everyone. Week. Great, great week. week. Have a good week. You too. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care, bye -bye. Take care. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Nan. Bye, Nan. Bye. Hi, Deb. I miss you terribly. Miss you too. <laughs> I miss you all terribly. <laughs> we'll be together soon. I'm counting on it. Take okay. care. Have a great bye -bye. week, everyone. Good seeing you, Ryder. Take care. Good seeing you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.